Chairman of BHP, uh, Jack Nasser, as well as its CEO of its iron ore operations, Ian Ashby. And, I mean, did it have much of a, a flow and effects to other iron ore miners on the, in the, uh, on the market? Well, a huge effect in terms of the currency. If we have a look at the Australian dollar over the last two sessions, this is how the Aussie dollar looks like. And you can see that we're not used to such a big move during the Aussie session, but you can see just how dramatic that move was on comments coming out from BHP Billiton. So those comments really spooking not only the Aussie dollar, but the Aussie market, and of course, uh, the iron ore miners being hit hard by it. And really in terms of what iron ore pricing, we've seen prices adjusting to the lower growth rates expected to come out of China. Back in September last year, iron ore prices were at 182 US a ton. We saw it drop to 116 US a ton by October, and now we're seeing it around about 145 US a ton. The fact is, most analysts in 2012 and 2013 have an average price of about 150 uh, US per ton. So if we start to see softness in prices, then we may see valuations on a lot of these iron ore miners being reduced as well. So priced into um, future expectations on cash flow is around about a 150 average price for both 2012 and 2013. If we have a look across the iron ore miners and the impacts, I guess BHP Billiton in terms of earnings now, it only makes up about 50% of EBIT, whereas Rio Tinto, there's a lot, much larger impact, about 80% of EBIT, and that was reflected in share price action today. We only saw BHP down by 0.1%, but Rio Tinto down by 0.4%, and of course those miners, those smaller cap are miners which are more highly leveraged to that iron ore price stocks like Fortescue which are trying to ramp up to 155 million tons per annum by June 2013 it doesn't really need extra funding if prices uh, have a bottom of about 120 but may need extra funding if we do see weakness below that mark so Fortescue was off by 1% Atlas Iron down by 2.6% and of course all this is being driven by China iron ore is used primarily for, uh, for steel production and it's driven by construction and urbanization of China in particular the property market and of course this week we've already seen numbers coming out of the property market in China showing that uh, prices on new homes in the month of February declined in 27 out of 70 cities and that was uh, more cities declining than January which saw 15 cities declining out of the 70 cities being surveyed so all about adjusting to uh, the lower growth rates expected to come out of China. Well, the intrepid mines in had a pretty good session this is all about some of the changes coming out of Indonesia at the moment. We started to hear these announcements coming through from the 6th of March where the Indonesian government itself is looking to uh, get some of the revenue coming through from its mining projects so that future projects, uh, about 51% of the company or more, will need to be owned by Indonesian interests. So I guess what we have seen from Intrepid Mines with its key asset being in Indonesia is that its share price has fallen quite sharply since that announcement. In fact, down 31% since that announcement came through on the 6th of March. Today we saw a bit of clarification in regards to that Indonesian asset. It is wholly owned by an Indonesian uh, company so it does look like there isn't going to be an impact there. So the share is really rebounding quite strongly up by 15% but of course we know BHP, Newcrest Mining, Rio Tinto all have assets in this country as, as well. So while it's, very, it's quite clear on new projects happening in, in Indonesia there is still some sort of grey area around existing uh, projects in Indonesia. So I guess it's a close thing that will keep an eye on given so many Australian companies have uh, assets and projects over there and of course the Indonesian government coming out with some more news today banning our raw mineral exports uh, from the country from the 6th of May which means it needs to be processed in Indonesia and what they've uh, done here is brought forward um, the two-year time frame so that the market was expecting to, for this to happen in two years time brought it, um, brought it forward to the 6th of May. So a lot of impacts there, but in terms of intrepid mines, I guess the bad news had been priced in, and today that clarification was good news for the shares, up by more than 10% today.